What's going on? What's up, Doug Nation? It's your man, C. Dougie, coming to you with that hot topic, that trending topic. Going to go ahead and fast forward to the NFL Combine next week. Before we get into it, please hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bells on. Also, share the video. We will be giving away two giveaways this month. It will be a jersey and a money giveaway. So in order to be notified about that, subscribe and turn your notifications on. This week, the Panthers sat here and had their coaches' press conference. What does that mean? What were some key factors into hearing from our coaches? Also, we've been restructuring some contracts. What other restructures will we have so we can clear cap space so we can be aggressive in free agency? And also, we'll talk about a couple of diamonds in the rough for the NFL Combine that could possibly be stars in the making with a good showing next week. So, we had three interviews um, interviews this week. Started with our head coach, with Frank Wright and Jim Caldwell. Then it went all the way to Wednesday and Thursday. We have not heard anything from anybody since we've hired this staff. Also, shout out to our tight ends coach, uh, Coach uh, Lilly, that came from UNC um, this week as well. But from the get-go, Frank Wright has sat here and done a phenomenal job hearing from how he was able to lure in these coaches to what he was able to do with the staff. Also, just a couple of notes that this man has sat here and said, with his staff, um, he will be calling plays until he's comfortable with Coach Brown uh, calling the plays, which I think we all knew that uh, Frank Wright is going to be calling those plays. I also think that he will get Thomas Brown opportunity maybe here, you know, sometime in the preseason, maybe halfway in the season. But I do feel like Thomas Brown will be like another air enemy underneath what he had in Andy Reid in Kansas City. Um, really, I mean, even on the next day when we had, uh, coach, uh, Evero come in, Frank Wright already set the tone and sat here and said, we will be running a three, four defense. He also shouted out David Temper for sitting here, opening up, uh, the checkbook to sit here with no salary cap for coaches to actually hire anybody he needed. He just didn't have a price on him. No, we don't know these contracts, but just to hear our coach and our owner and once and, um, in unison to sit here and bring the best coaches here to Carolina where we can get back to that winning franchise. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm really stoked to sit here and see what these coaches can do and what free agents we can bring in. Also, Josh McCallum and Frank Wright have sat here and already been in cahoots with trying to figure out what quarterback. They've met several times late at night. Yes, the Combine's next week. They've already been watching film on whichever quarterbacks that they're trying to bring in. Who that may be, we don't know yet. But trust me, we'll know something next week when it comes to the Combine. Also, Coach Jim Caldwell spoke on the same day. He shouted out the relationships that he had with Frank Wright. He does not want to be a head coach. He loves the role that he's here for. He's here to help um, Frank Wright look in that third eye. Yes, with him being a senior advisor, he can help also with offense and special teams. But just having a head coach with the experience that Jim Caldwell has had is great to add to the staff. Then also when Coach Evero spoke the next day, along with Coach um, Coach Capers, it really, it was, it was, you know, the type of defense that we're going to be is a 3-4, but he wants each player to fit in the scheme. It's not going to just be a standard 3-4 and you have nobody to sit there and, you know, be accounted for. He also shouted out Brian Burns. Yes, I know a lot of people sit here and think Brian Burns is going to be traded. It can't be. How, how can you come from a middle of the pack defense to the top five defense, regardless of how you feel about Brian Burns, with that man being traded away? So I expect Brian Burns to have a big season. Also, Coach Evero said that he definitely – wants our defense to be physical, great effort in attacking the ball. If you just look at the film and the film studies that people have broke down on this defense, if you just see the attention to detail, the going to the ball, it's just not one player. They're all gathering to the ball to get a tackle in. It's going to be something to see. Also, Jeremy Chin has had a bad year since his first year coming to lead when he was closer to the line. Uh, Coach Evero did say that he does expect – Jeremy Chen to be playing closer to the line. Does that mean him moving back to linebacker? We do not know, but I definitely know Coach Evero will put him in the best position to sit here and be the best that he can be because, as we can see, 
he has had um, limps in playing just safety. But I do expect Jeremy Chin to be one of those players to step up in this 3-4 defense as well. Um, coach Capers did speak as well. It was good to see our first, our first coach of the organization to come back and speak after Coach Evero. But also, like Coach Capers said, he's here to help whatever means, whatever Coach uh, Frank Wright needs him to do. And just the leadership qualities, like he said, he sees in Frank Wright. This man is going to be a great coach. He was a great teammate whenever he had to coach him as one of our first quarterbacks to play for the Panthers. So, and I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm just stoked with this offense. I've already said previous that I feel like this is a top 10 def I mean, top 10 coaching staff. So just had, just having two senior advisors and two well-known head coaches with Don Capers and um, Jim Caldwell, Frank Wright can't lose with having advisors that can be speaking in his ear. Also, let's speed it up with Thomas Brown and Deuce Staley spoke the last day. Thomas Brown sat here and said he wants a point guard as his quarterback, meaning a leader. A point guard runs the offense, is not afraid to sit there and get in their, you know, their big man, their playmaker's faces. I really am ready to see if Thomas Brown brings some of those schemes over from the Los Angeles Rams. And also the hammer, Deuce Staley. He advocated for Deontay Foreman being a high priority and free agency for us to bring back. Deuce Staley is going to be a vocal voice that we're going to hear possibly mic'd up during training camp. I can't wait to hear what this man has to say, how he holds the players accountable, and just the teaching that he brings to our team. Um, now let's get into these restructures. We've already had Austin Corbett restructure his uh, contract yesterday to free up some um, free agency space. Also, I feel like there would be Taylor Moten that would sit there be another restructure. DJ Moore would be another restructure. And it just depends on, yes, Easy Evero did bring up Shaq Thompson. I don't know if that was a smoke screen. Will Shaq Thompson sit there and be a... Um, a player that sits there and restructures his contract, or we cut him and re-sign him. Uh, I definitely expect us to have thirty million in cap space. I know I said fifty, but fifty was a big number. But I definitely expect something where somewhere between thirty or over for cap space, or for us to be aggressive. And it definitely shows that Scott Fitter has already started doing this before the combine. So I definitely feel like we're going to be aggressive in free agency to fill those holes and be patient and be smart when it comes to our pits during the draft. So with the draft, the draft starts next week. Uh, people start reporting on February 28th. And I also um, have seen that our coaching staff will be speaking on the 1st, which is Wednesday. We'll have Frank Wright and our GM, um, Scott Fitter. But just a couple of names that I definitely am ready to see. The running back out of uh, UAB, Dwayne McBride. I feel like he's a running back that's going to be just like a Damian Pierce. You don't have to get a top tier running back earlier in the rounds to sit there and have them have an impact on your team. You also have Cam Pay um, Peoples out of Appalachian State. And also my favorite, Tyrod Spears out of Tulane. Like this man is going to continue to just, his stock is going to go up with him sitting there from what he did at the Senior Bowl to what he's doing now. I think Spears would definitely sit there and do have a good showing next week in, in, in Indianapolis. Also, with wide receivers, Jaden Reed was also there at the Senior Bowl. He definitely got a couple of stocks up. Also, another wide receiver, Demario Douglas out of Liberty. The man is definitely a speedster, and I expect for him to do really well in the 40 and also in the catching drills. Let's head over to tight ends. Yes, you have Payne Durham out of Purdue, another tight end that was invited to the Senior Bowl. He was not, he's not one of your top tight ends, like the tight end out of Notre Dame, where you got Kincaid out of um, Utah. I feel like per, uh, Purdue's tight end, um, Payne Durham, is definitely one to look out for. But the one that I'm, I'm hoping shows a good showing is Luke. Mossgraves out of Oregon State. The man came out of nowhere. Yes, based off of the offense that they run at Oregon State, this man definitely displayed that he can be a pass blocking and can catch and has a great catch radius when he was out there in Mobile. A D lineman, Keon White. D lineman out of Georgia Tech. I feel like with us going to a 3-4 defense, we need big bodies. 
he does not have the uh, experience with playing time, but if you just saw some of his tape, I feel like White would definitely be a D lineman that we'll be looking at to draft. Also, you have a D lineman out of Kansas State, Phillips, Anikwe, Osmo. This man was set here and had first team accolades in the Big 12 as a DN. I feel like he would definitely have a good showing as well. Then you have Owen Papea, linebacker out of Auburn. He was all around the ball for Auburn, regardless of how their defense was. He was a leader in that locker room as well. You also have linebacker D. Winter out of TCU. Uh, a thumper, definitely big, 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, definitely like him to be a dominant or rough. And also we got our last position, Darius uh, Rush, cornerback out of South Carolina. This name is going to be a name that a lot of people are going to start bringing up. This man um, was projected to be undrafted, but now he's more in the middle of the pack between a fourth and fifth rounder. I think he can actually move up to the third round and maybe a reach, but based off his measurements and how he does Indianapolis at the Combine, I expect this man's stock to continue to go up. Then last, you do have Kyle Blue Kelly out of uh, Stanford, long receiver. Didn't have a lot of interceptions, but just to see his ball skills and his readiness of catching the ball as a DB and his footwork, I'm expecting uh, Cal Blue Kelly to have a good week next week as well. I know I didn't talk about quarterbacks. We all know quarterbacks. I want to see the eyes of Scott Fitter, the eyes of Josh McCown, the eyes of Frank Wright when those quarterbacks are on display next week. Now it's time for us to start getting our quarterback. Now we're going to see how to react to certain quarterbacks. The question is going to come next week. Are you guys going to get a free agent? Are you guys going to draft a quarterback? What are you looking for in a quarterback? We already heard our offensive coordinator, Thomas Brown, sit here and say he's looking for a point guard at quarterback. So the combine is here. Free agency is approaching. We're ready. We got our coaching staff in place. We're restructuring money. Let's get it, Panther Nation. Again, it's your man, C. Dougie. If you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Turn your notifications on. Hit the share button as well. We are trending up. Again, we're doing two giveaways this month of March. We're doing a jersey giveaway, and we're doing a cash giveaway if we hit 500 subs. As always, one love. We out.